Hi everyone. In this short screencast, we're going to be talking about writing a paragraph and specifically with supporting ideas. Okay, so let's go. What do we need to do first? First of all, you need to take a few minutes to think about what you want to write and also take some time to write down those ideas. So if you're writing your opinion about the topic, first of all, what's the topic? What do you want to say about it? What do you want to argue or claim? What point do you want to make? All of this is what we call your thesis, or in academic language, the thesis statement. So the paragraph begins with a topic sentence or a thesis statement. And in that topic sentence or thesis statement, you need to include the topic and a claim or argument or opinion about that topic. And in this, we can also introduce our opinion, our main idea, our main message. Because basically, what is a thesis statement? A thesis statement sums up the purpose and argument of the whole piece of writing. And in an academic writing uh, context, we, start, we state those ideas right from the beginning. So what are some examples of a thesis statement or a topic sentence? Let's look at the first one. People are more persuaded by the actual message contained in social media posts than they are by how many others view the posts. So there's a claim. This is more than this, and that people are persuaded. What we expect the rest of the paragraph to be about is bringing us evidence or facts that this is indeed true. Let's look at another one. There's been a stereotype that the ideal nuclear family consists of two married heterosexual parents of the same race and 2.5 kids. So we know what he's saying. This is describing a typical or ideal nuclear family. And he's making the claim that it's a stereotype. And now we expect him to prove that to us. Many parents worry about how exposure to technology might affect toddlers developmentally. So what are we talking about? Exposure to te technology and the effect on toddlers and that the parents worry, which is a kind of viewpoint or argument or claim. So now we need to support. So what do we need to support our thesis or topic sentence with? Well, we need different examples and facts, such as statistics or graphics or dates or numbers. We can also have personal examples, and we can use quotations from the texts. So we use all of those things, and we have to organize it in a clear way that gives commentary or an explanation. How should we, how should we organize this information? Let's take a look. So we have our topic sentence or thesis statement, and then we have a supporting sentence and some kind of detail, and then another supporting sentence and another detail, and another supporting sentence and a detail, and a supporting sentence and detail, and then our concluding sentence or final thought. The detail here is related to this, and the detail here is related to this, and so on. We can have two or three, or four or five, or as many as we want. And how does that actually look like in a paragraph? So here we see our topic sentence. There are several ways drivers can reduce their stress. And then we can see this is our main supporting idea, and an example or explanation, a second supporting idea, and an explanation, a third supporting sentence, explanation, fourth 
and fifth, and then at the end, our concluding sentence. And what exactly should be in that concluding sentence? Let's take a look. Well, the purpose of that concluding sentence is to either restate the thesis or the argument or the claim. And how do we do that? First, we can restate the topic sentence of the paragraph. We say it in different words. We can summarize and refer to the different points, the key points in the paragraph. Sometimes we'll want to draw the conclusion based on all of the information. We can offer another idea that sums up or illustrates, or perhaps even make a prediction based on that. And remember, the conclusion can be more than one sentence. Sometimes it can even be two. Let's take a look. But before that, we also want to introduce our conclusion with a transition word or phrase. In conclusion. In sum, all in all, in other words, in any event, in brief, in short, so, therefore. These words help show the reader that the support has finished and now the writer is summing up. So we are here, we have a conclusion with two sentences. You can gain both muscle and stamina if you follow these simple steps. Although any exercise program takes time, the results, muscle and stamina, are bound to please. So before that, we probably have had lots of information about those simple steps. So, some kind of conclusion. So part of your job in studying families is to listen and understand how those other rural student families experience life, what their strengths are, and what they need. It, this is summarizing. So, we've written our paragraph. You've got those ideas down. But now you have to stop a minute and look at your work again. Read it again for content. Ask yourself, do I have a clear thesis? Is the thesis supported? Are the supporting ideas true and accurate? And then finally, read your work again for language. Check your spelling, your grammar, your vocabulary. All of those important things. Just take another look to make sure that it is as best as you can.